Picture yourself in Geneva at Watches and Wonders 2024. And Zenith has the orangest watch of the year. This is the Defy Revival A3648. And everything I thought about this watch changed once I got it on the wrist. I know it's a mouthful, but what is a Defy Revival? Well, it's two things. Back in the late 60s, early 70s, 1969, to be exact, the same year Zenith debuted the El Primero. It was a big year. They also debuted the Defy line of wristwatches, and these watches were meant to be rugged, everyday sports watches. Water resistance was a big feature. Shock resistance was a big feature. Even so much as throwing the watches out of windows to test them, the legend goes is what Zenith was doing with their Defy watches, and they were doing crazy tests to prove that these watches are rugged and capable. And that brings us to Revival. And the Revival is a place where Zenith references their history and their archive, reissues, wrist on vintage watches, that type of thing. So a Defy Revival is both of those things together. This being a one-to-one -one is exactly what it sounds like. Compared to that 1969 release of the Plongeur 600, is millimeter for millimeter exactly like this watch that we see here today, including the orange. That's why it's so orange. This day glow is very mid-century and very scuba boom orange. 37 millimeter diameter, 15.5 millimeter case height, and we'll get to that. Sapphire on the front and back. Uh, you did not have an exhibition case back in 1969, but we have one today. Caliber Elite 670 inside that beats at a hearty four hertz. It's not a high beat Zenith, but this is still a tried and true Zenith movement. Automatic, mind you. Octagonal case, 600 entire meters of water resistance, which 600 meters is a lot no matter what year it is. So what does this watch actually like to wear? Well, when I was thinking about this question, another watch came to mind, one that I think a lot of us are probably more familiar with, and that is the Black Bay 58. And strictly speaking, maybe closer to the Black Bay 54 because this watch here, the Zenith, is 37 millimeters across, just like that one. However, with the added height from the crystal here on the Zenith, it has a bit more wrist presence, something akin to the Black Bay 58. And I know 15 and a half millimeters tall sounds pretty tall, but the way the case back is designed with these short lugs and also the domed crystal, a lot of that height is hidden in one way or another. It sits down into your wrist pretty nicely. And this domed crystal, it kind of disappears and you don't feel that height like you think you would when you're looking at a spec sheet. Now in something like a Tudor Black Bay, the case side is just a thick mono block of metal on the side and you see the case height. Here, you have steps and layers with a thin case side, the bezel, and then the collar ring coming up to the crystal on top. So you don't feel that visual weight of a case height quite as much in something like this. There's no faux patina, gilt accents. This is what we've been asking for as enthusiasts. We love vintage watches and we wish companies would make watches like they used to. And if you want a new watch the way Zenith would make a new watch, they have that. In the Defy Extreme, it's a 42 and a half millimeter titanium diver with, believe it or not, the same 600 meter water resistance that you have in this compact 37 millimeter case. So there's a couple things I wanna take note of that I didn't really expect to like so much. Number one being the bracelet. Five links, uh, the two in the middle, number two and number four, they have like a polished rounded edge. They look like beads of rice. Uh, of days gone by, the Beads of Rice bracelets, and it's really solid, it's really sturdy, it feels really robust, because this is, it's not a lightweight watch, but it's also not super heavy, but you're aware of it. It's, it's got some heft to it, it has some presence while you're wearing it. Number two, this color orange. It wasn't necessarily a choice that Zenith made for the Revival. This was on the original watch from the 60s and 70s, but I think what they did with this one is that they recreated it beautifully. The hue is just right. It feels like it's glowing. It's like super high vis, traffic cone, whatever you want to call it. It's bright, it's in your face, but it's not obnoxious. I really, really have come to like the way it looks more so than I thought I would initially. I also want to talk about the 430 day window. 
It's another one of those things that might seem odd, but here, the execution from Zenith is, again, right on the money. It's cut on the same angle as the minute markers on the chapter ring, so it blends in very nicely while still being able to be seen at a glance. Zenith has done a lot of work designing a watch that is capable and comfortable in being able to hit 600 meters of water resistance, but in an unassuming package. It, you have presence on the wrist, it's polished, it's orange. However, it's not intrusive, it's not cumbersome. This is a comfortable watch that you could wear every day. And along with the size, the other big part of the conversation that comes with the Defy Revival Diver is the price. And I think that's a big clue about where Zenith sees themselves in the market. Zenith is known, they've made their name, making high beat movements and especially high beat chronograph movements. And those watches are priced at a commensurate level. Now, if you want a diver from Zenith with a high beat movement that they're known for, you can get that. It's the Defy Extreme and it's $11,300. Now this watch doesn't have that high beat movement, but it's also priced accordingly. It makes sense in their catalog. High $7,000 is right where Zenith sees themselves competing with the likes of Rolex, Breitling, and I would even compare this watch especially to something like the Omega Seamaster Heritage. But then again, you're still making concessions with the Omega at 41 millimeters, it's a bit larger, and also you don't get the same water resistance. 300 there versus 600. 600, again, like that's massive in the Defy Revival. After a day of riding a rented electronic bicycle around Piedmont Park here in Atlanta, I had to come to a park tavern to grab a burger, grab a beer, sit down and collect my thoughts. The first being the size. It's really hard to judge any watch online, on paper, just by looking at the specs, and especially something like this with admittedly an odd dimension, 37 by 15 and a half. You really have to spend some time with this watch in person, in your hand, on your wrist, to get a sense of what it actually means. Also, the price for this watch is a bit steep, but in this price range that we're looking at, the price point six to $8,000, it hits a very specific set of notes that other watches in that range don't hit. And all of that kind of puts this watch a little bit into a class of its own. So why am I doing a week on the wrist with the Zenith Defy Revival Diver? Well, to be perfectly honest with you is because I saw the pictures and I liked the watch. And I'm happy to report that after spending time with it, everything I thought I was worried about, mainly the size, turned out not to be an issue. And that's really what I want to get across is that spending time with the watch can either confirm or deny whatever opinions you might have. After getting it on the wrist, all those extra millimeters like I was talking about with the crystal and the way it's designed kind of disappear. And this feels like a smaller watch than 15 and a half millimeters. 37, I think, is beautiful and just right for a vintage inspired watch. I mean, come on, it's one to one, so it should be. And what it comes down to is this, is I think Zenith has knocked it out of the park which was to be expected for a reissue. They've done it perfectly. This is an old watch that looks new, not a new watch that is trying to look old. And that's an important distinction. And that's what I think puts this watch in a class of its own.